So here's what's really quite interesting. So I put up the fencing in different shapes. Um, one to kind of keep the grass from not being horrific, really torn up and everything. And then the other one is uh, have it set up where it'll cause the dogs to have different cogency structures of the backyard so that they're going to have different navigation skills. So that means they're going to learn different aspects of their behavior. So let me just say that. So the dogs will learn as they're walking around what's happening by saying, oh, wow, okay, I've, I've always done it this way. And now that um, my dad has changed the structure in the back, I have to make adjustments where I go back and forth now instead of sideways. So, I'll, you know, I'll kind of make it a little pathway, etc. You can see how it's worn out in some places in the dark here, hopefully. Um, so then I get them to do that. So what the cool thing is, <laughs> so I have it this way right now, just as a T, and it's nighttime, so it's great because, um, you know, just to kind of get them to make avoidance behaviors. And Sammy, as I was walking her, so I always feel for Sammy's movements and behaviors to see adjustments. And what I did in this one is I <laughs> moved her forward and I could feel her starting to want to get up. And that meant to me that she wanted to get down. And what happened is I noticed that she wanted to get down right here. I thought, oh, that was, see how big David is? That was, he was so dangerous today. So the thing is that he's, David, he, he's literally <laughs> moving the whole thing off its mooring. Um, so I was supposed to get Sammy and I think she's run. Oh, she's over there now. Okay. So... Sammy's looking for the mice and rats are all over the place. So she stops over here to go to the bathroom because what she sees this is an actual structural structural change in the in the physicality of the yard, and she then understands a uh, not a, like a delineation or a demarcation of everything, right? As uh, how the construct of the backyard is. It's really quite cool. Oh no, what happened here? I'm sorry guys. Whoa! Alright, that's probably really irritating. <laughs> oh, it's William's breath. <laughs> and there's Sammy. There's Sammy. Hello Sammy. <clears throat> so listen. Hear that rhythm, and then Lincoln will start it in a few seconds. <coughs> Hello, David. There he goes. All right, there's a noise behind us. We're hearing that. Watch out for Sammy. <laughs> Said, there's Lincoln. <laughs> David said, David's taller than a garbage can. <laughs> he, just, he just stands. Oh, oh, are you, David, come here. Come, 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 David. Come, come, come. Oh, David. Oh, no, David. David. David, David, oh no, David, you're okay, there you go, you're okay, you're okay, there you go, Saliba, hi Lincoln, yes Lincoln, hi William, so David, ready to go play, so William, come here, William, give me a hug, William, come here, okay, David, no, David, William, stop, St David, stop, William, stop, so now I'm going to reconcile with William as well what I did with David. So what happened just now? You're okay, William. And then we look up at the airplane and talk into the direction of the airplane. So then we give an objectification to the dog of what is actually the sound originating from. So this is why you can address issues when dogs have... Um, when dogs have... Uh, so I'm just going to look up there and say, you're okay. Right? They can see here. They don't understand. They, there's, no, there's no ability to... Hi Lincoln. Hi William. Hi David. You're okay, William. 
So there we go on the plane up there. So what happens is um, by creating directional aspect of our voice, right? So we're then giving that part that's nonverbal fluency in that structure of um, the audible behavior is directional. It's just like when the dog growls, it just comes out naturally. That's an, that's an audible be, uh, manifestation of the physiological expression. So then, so we're doing that, and that's how you're thinking consciously, right? That construct in a more of a rudimentary format. So we see the dog going like that, going, ah, right? So the hair's a tone, and she, he, she hears, he or she hears a tone as we're reaching for it, and as we're toying, doing that. And what happens is, is eventually, like if you're looking at a bird, it's not making any sound. So there's no relational aspect of that. So then when you're looking at an object that is making a consistency, right? A consistency, a learning structure, the foundational aspect is the dog hears that. Okay, there's something, I don't know where it's coming from, because the sound is coming somewhere. But if the dog doesn't have the ability to relate because there's also the timing aspect between the delay of visual, right, light, and of sound, the speed of sound. So then, of course, there's that dis disconnection because by the time the plane has um, flown by, sometimes the sound is behind. So all these things have to be cogently structured for the dogs. And so when we track it for them, as we're keeping them safe, they feel safe. So that's why you see the videos of me with Minky and all, like five, and other pretty crazy, dangerous dogs and quite reactive, that they can, um, that they're all okay. And in the sense that, oh, shoot, I'm gonna go inside here. In the sense that they're able to uh, be calm and I'm just talking to them because I'm giving them the tone of voice I use when I'm helping them feel safe and, and sitting with them. Um, and Lincoln, seriously, he's like literally standing in front of me. Um, and so and it's hard to see because the lights in my eyes, but I mean, he knew I was coming. Thank you, Lincoln. So it's really hard for them to understand where the direction is. So then what I do is create an objectification because of the way the dogs think cogently, structuring the logic and what they can see emotionally, and being able to calm themselves down. And they're able to calm themselves down by self-regulation and self-soothing. Then they have the cogency to experience that and keep that as a memory structure within that foundation of um, uh, emotive templates and all that. Oh shoot, my my pizza's gonna burn. Look at me, I'm so I'm so like like I, that's why I don't care about money. Like I want to I want someone who understands. Hi, Minky. So it's always it's always got to be an adjustment. So even whatever I'm talking about, I have to stop immediately, take control of my own priorities and say, you know, actually I have to put Mickey ahead of me now because he came running over. And now he has the fidgeting, as you've seen in other videos, which are psychosomatic of him, unable to process emotions. That's why he growls right there uh, quickly. It's very difficult for him. Come on, Lincoln. Thank you. I'm going to be able to turn off the light. Okay, come, Mickey. Good job. So I'm just going to turn off that light. Yeah, all right. Um, so yeah, it gives them the ability to process an environmental structure of thinking. Sorry about the noise here. I wasn't expecting the bat, this opportunity. This is a, actually, you know, this movie is um. I mean, I don't know. This this is um. This is a Drew Barrymore yeah. movie that just came out. And I'm looking at her. What do you mean? And what I want to say about that movie, actually, is it's a brilliant concept of the, um, of the director, the writer. It's the ability to create this incredible structure of a, of a life story and the dramatics aspect of almost reaching a sociopathetic, not pathic, but pathetic, sociopathetic aspect for the structure of uh, psychological behavior of fame and fortune and being so close to that, almost as a, a codependent financial nature. Uh, that structure changes immediately to almost a, a psychopathic aspect of it where there's no care other than to achieve that goal of fame, right? Of not being alone. So that way you can always think someone is there for you and you become even more and more uh, hungry for that. So that's an interesting movie. But um, yeah, so always want to make sure that um, if there's something going on with Minky, I'm going to address that with Minky right away because... He's very fragile with his emotions. So get him out that... Lincoln, come in. Lincoln, really? You're going to... Oh, there's like mosquitoes everywhere. Thank you, Lincoln. I'm going to have to make them dinner. But yeah, so it's an ability for the dogs to understand a cogency structure. And that cogency structure... I'm probably got it right in my nose. And I probably have stuff in it. And I'm going to have to just delete it. 
But all those behaviors that happen in it, you know, the airplane going over and all that stuff, it gives a directional structure so that it allows the dog to understand that we are acknowledging, acknowledging, I'm so dry mouth, uh, we are acknowledging what the dog is feeling as well as the human understands already. So we teach them. The consciousness of, uh, my theorem of consciousness of learning, and I say that because um, I can prove it. Everything I've done, I can prove it. And I can technically, profoundly describe and predict behavior before it happens. So we can all do that anyways. All right. Okay. We'll all get to it. Um, all right. You guys have fun. I want to make sure I didn't put anything in there. See, I want to I want to be more free with what I'm doing and talking so you guys understand how um, uncomfortable I am doing all this stuff because I feel for, um, you know, it's something that just happened to me for free. I, I, I did things and I took on a dog that was predatorial and, and tried to kill a woman and another dog that tried to kill a woman, um, uh, Great Danes, both of them, and I did it because I wanted to. And I still do that. But the thing is that I have to learn what to do from being in those threatening positions. I didn't have anywhere to go. I don't use any treats, medication, nothing at all. I try to get the muzzle off as fast as possible in uh, a t and fastest possible time. And then I do that and I go boom, boom, boom. And I drop it all out and I show it in the videos here in real time, dynamic changes. I'm inflating, uh, I'm not inflating, I'm inputting an, an, an enormous amount of data in real time all at once because I'm able to structure it all and boom, 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 pressure it through and be able to conflate it and, and manifest it into accurate behaviors. So you've watched the video of Mickey, I'm um, sorry, not Mickey, um, of Dave, uh, Sammy and David when I got David on a retractable and I show how to use both of them at the same time on a cogent structure. So then you look at subroutining and all this type of uh, learning behaviors this is how we can do that uh, through the learning process, right? We ask someone to do something, they do it. We have to say thank you. No, we have to make an acknowledgement so that they learn the finishing process. And then at the same time, it comes output as well. Okay, there, that's what we do, right? And then, so there's an acknowledgement of the person realizing that, okay, this is what I've done to complete my uh, my task on behalf of you because of a codependent relationship. And then the person asking for the water for example, a glass of water is saying, because I'm really thirsty too, um, is saying that I've asked you to do something, you're doing it, so I'm acknowledging it, not just for you to know that the task, task has been completed, but for myself as well, so I can acknowledge my own ability to perceive what your behavior is as a whole structure of my request, you, what you do, and I come back, I get to track you, your behavior as well, because it's a predacious aspect of humanity and animals and, and survival. So that's why I can do all these things with dogs just like that. And it's very simple. And that's why I'm, I'm finally decided to just give it all out. All right. Bye.